All right, let's go. We're welcome to uh, Allow Me to Be Frank. It's November 3rd, 2021. Uh, fall weather is upon us. I'm heading to Miami for a few days as I try to move from one place uh, to another, and moving fucking sucks. Frank, well, yeah, it is another day. Fall weather is here. Summer's over officially, inclu- particularly the summer weather. And yeah, you got a lot going on. So let's get right into it about your uh, move and the fiascos that you've already run into. Well, if as you can see behind me, uh, the closet uh, is what I'm trying to concentrate on right now, getting some of my baseball cards over there. I got two crates over today, and that was not easy at all. I've got my yearbooks over there. I still have to get my bobbleheads. Trying to find a moving company is tough. I guess I'm going to send out a couple of estimates and figure out which one I'm going to hire. Although I really don't love hiring a moving company. No, but I mean, it should make your uh, moving process a little easier considering how hard it's been already. And uh, what happened to you the other day, Frank? You locked both sets. I locked myself out of my apartment, my (laughs) old apartment. How I put my keys. Well, I put my keys down on a, a table or a filing cabinet in this case. Uh, and as I start, and I'm the putting uh, stuffed food a window. And uh, on that day, it was my starting lineups. So I'm putting those food a window, and I thought I had my uh, key chain, my uh, my keys attached to my belt, and I didn't. So when I went outside, I realized my keys were still inside, and I couldn't get my uh, couldn't start my car, couldn't get in either apartment because both keys are on both uh, are on the, the on the uh, the keychain. So first, I tried to use a uh, putter, and that didn't even come close. And I took my uh, snow brush, and that didn't come close. So I tried to uh, get Jersey Jerry to bring over a fishing pole, figuring he might have a fishing pole. But instead, he uh, came over himself and climbed through the window and got my keys. Oh, my God. Did you, like, hoist him up through the window? No, I'm on the bottom floor. So you could just climb right in? Yeah, right through the pizza window. That is hilarious. Jerry, Jer- Jersey Jerry climbing through the pizza window, and I wish we had footage of that. I wish I had footage of my yeah, move. I mean, it's, 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 it's backbreaking. What made Literally. you call Jersey Jerry, Frank? I know... He lives across. He lives in Belleville. He lives in Belleville, and he's also known for being a blue-collar guy who rescues people whenever they're yes. in. Yes. You know, ironically, he only lives a block away from my new place. Oh, that's amazing. So maybe he'll he'll help you out a little bit with your move too, uh, along yeah. with the movers, yeah. which, which might yeah. uh, might help out a bit. I'm going to try to hire a mover by the end of the week as I go down to Miami for a few days. Watch that lousy football team in Miami. Although they're playing the Texans, they better fucking win that game. And of course, the Dolphins came up empty. Uh, no Deshaun Watson at this year's trade deadline. Yeah, they wanted some assurances, and basically, he couldn't give. Them. But eventually, I think that trade is going to happen. I just, it's just not now. It might happen. I think it's going to happen uh, before the draft. So you're thinking his legal issues will be cleared up then? Or cleared up to a point where the Dolphins won't be nervous about getting him. Basically, uh, they, uh, they actually had permission to talk to him. But the permission came too late and the uh, trade had, and the trade deadline stopped it. I mean, if there was a, another week or two, it might still have happened. They just the clock ran out, and the net and the um, the nets. I'm watching the fucking nets. The dolphins basically want like uh, insurances that he's not gonna end up getting uh, charged criminally or find a way for him to settle uh, any civil lawsuits before he comes. Yeah, well, uh, that's a I mean, it, 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 he, yeah, Deshaun Watson can't go back to Houston. 
And the the question is, who will be the one that makes the trade? And uh, I think the Dolphins are the team that makes the most sense, especially since Tua is just not the answer. Although a uh, big part of the problem is the offensive line, which I don't think uh, Joe Montana, Dan Marino, and uh, Tom Brady could uh, succeed with this fucking offensive line. No, the Dolphins just look like a broken team right now, and a big part of it is their offensive line. And uh, Flores might take the hit. He shouldn't take the hit unless Brian, unless Chris Greer goes with him. Chris Greer is is it, Chris Greer fucked this up, and Chris Greer has to go. What's the drastic change with the Dolphins this year, particularly on their offensive line? Like what changed from last year to this year? They uh, let some of their uh, veterans go, and uh, met with uh, and. Uh, Turn more to the uh, the youth and the rookies. The, uh, the Dolphins are one of the younger teams in the league, but it's just not working. It's just not working. And of course, Tua has no time to throw the ball. The offensive line is atrocious. Uh, they they still have not gotten a, ru- a running back. As Miles Gaskin is 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 averaging one is averaging point nine yards per carry. So it 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 it, it it's a train wreck. It's a fiasco. You have to think Gaskin's uh, letdown of a year after what he did last year is also has a lot to do with the offensive line, too. Could be. I mean, Gaskin wasn't great last year, but he's been atrocious this year. And and everything comes back to just the offensive line. I mean, it, not only are they not blocking, but every series it seems that they have at least one false start. And every series they have at least one holding call. You're preaching to the choir here. The Giants have had offensive line issues for the last 10 years. And uh, trust me, it's not an easy fix. And now you see uh, Saquon, who can't stay on the field ever, is probably about to come back and play on Sunday. And now he tested positive for COVID. I mean, what's going on there? They had well, at, at least he at least he didn't at least he didn't say uh Oh, oh, I got the vaccine, and then go, yeah, never mind, I lied. Yeah, what what was with that with Aaron Rodgers, where he got some shots or something? Some... Yeah, he says that he was inoculated, but he wasn't vaccinated. Yeah, so now, and he was automatically ruled out this week since he's not vaxxed. Yeah, well, he, he, he did. Uh, it's, at least it's not Evander Kane bad. You You know the story about Evander Kane, right? I don't. Evander Keynes is an uh, NHL player who's probably not going to be in the NHL much longer. Uh, he got drafted uh, by the Atlanta Thrashers. I mean, this is how long he's been in the league. He played for the Atlanta Thrashers. And uh, the Thrash, he's actually named after Evander Holyfield. And uh, basically, when the Thrashers drafted him, they said that this is going to be the guy we build our, our, our future around. And that quickly fizzled. They moved to Winnipeg. He hated Winnipeg. So he got traded a few times. Played in Buffalo. I mean, it was a, 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 a clusterfuck in Buffalo. Buffalo is still a clusterfuck. They, Buffalo couldn't wait to get rid of him. He ends up in uh, San Jose. And now in the last couple of years, he's been in and out of hot water. Uh, there was rumors he was betting against the uh, Sharks. And throwing games. But there was nothing to substantiate that. And then uh, there was an investigation this year uh, when he came to training camp. He presented a vaccine card, and then the vaccine card uh, turned out to be a counterfeit vaccine card. Oh, my God. You know that's like a $15,000 fine in New York? Yeah, well, he, well Vander, Holy, uh, Vander Holyfield. Vander King got suspended 20 games. Holy shit. For a, um, a presenting a false vaccination card. That's so bad. I mean, that's even worse than Kyrie Irving. Yeah, I know. Which Will he ever play? I don't know. Nets are playing the Hawks right now. I know. They're they're on the verge of winning, are they not? Uh, they're up 13 with four minutes left. The Knicks, meanwhile, lost by double digits to the Pacers tonight. They've lost two straight now. <sighs> the Nets are... Oh, Jesus. The Nets are uh, paying tribute to the... Uh, Jersey Nets tonight with their uh, uniforms, their uh, City Edition uniforms this year. Yeah, how do you like those? I like them. Ugh. 
Yeah, they were pretty cool. Looking. I hate when they go up the floor with a 13-point lead and take a shot uh, uh, two seconds off the shot clock. Who shot it Harden or Durant? Uh, Harden. <laughs> it's it was not a three-point shot. You know, when you're up 13 with three minutes left, take a... Take that clock down a little bit. Don't take the. Don't rush your shots. Well, Frank, uh, uh, we were talking a lot about the NFL. The NFL had a very much letdown of the trade deadline. Literally, nothing happened at the NFL. Von trade Miller deadline. went to uh, the Rams. Besides Von Miller going to the Rams and Melvin Ingram going to the uh, uh, the Chiefs. Basically. Well, you know, uh, you, truthfully, the NFL trade deadline has never really been sizzle. There's no. never been a lot of sizzle. No, it's like the worst trade. It's nothing compared to the MLB trade deadline. I mean, the, the MLB trade deadline's always busy. The NBA sometimes has uh, good uh, good de- 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 deadlines and bad deadlines. The NHL's always got a lot of movement. The NHL actually has more movement than any other sport on the trade deadline. You think more than MLB? Yes. That's pretty hard to believe. No, the NHL, the NHL always has a ton of moves. Especially since MLB is the most exciting, though, because the good teams get star players and the bad teams get top prospects. Well, with the NHL, it's usually more not big sizzle. It's usually just uh, teams that are out of it trading uh, bench players to teams that are in it to be have that extra grit and toughness on the... Uh, for the playoff run. I remember 1994. And it was a trade deadline that stunned people. The Rangers made four trades. And they traded one of the top scorers in NHL history. Named uh, Mike Gartner. And they traded him for Glenn Anderson. Now Glenn Anderson was an uh, experienced playoff player. One of those former Oilers. They also traded... Uh, uh, who did they trade? Um, yeah, that's who they trade. They traded Tony Granato, who would go on to become a, a superstar, or almost a superstar. He was a very good player, serviceable player. His sister was on the Olympic team. And the Tony Granato trade, they got Stefan Matteau, who won them two playoff games in overtime. Wow. I mean... It, on the surface, the trade deadline wasn't much, but and then they also got Greg McTavish from the trade too. So it's like like every like they they got all these players that were like end up being their the key players to win the Stanley Cup who are like washed up players, but it was like they sold it sold their soul for that cup. Yeah, but I mean it was definitely worth it. Well, just think if they didn't win it, they'll be they will be talking about the uh, eighty two year drought. Yeah, exactly. Now, now, now it's only the 27-year drought currently. And, yeah, well, um, won, but of course they won with mostly uh, uh, Oiler players. Boy, I got it. Boy, this stuff I got it. All the stuff I have on my walls. Will a mover really actually help me with this much? God. I don't know. It depends what who you get. If you get a top-notch service, you, you're gonna need it with all the stuff you got, Frank. I mean, I'm trying to do as much as I can, but I just can't seem to do that much. Yeah, it's a lot, and you talked about how you don't have enough space there, but certainly got enough objects and, and items to move to, into the loopholes. And my uh, service, uh, my ser- my uh, storage space is filling up fast. It, I, I feel like I'm on uh, Jaws there, and, and you're going to need a bigger storage unit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I got so many baseball cards. I got so many yearbooks. I mean, just in these, just in these closets, and then uh, the bobbleheads. You know, I I found things I forgot I I had. I I went to a flea market one time and I found all these uh, autographs from the '72 Dolphins. Really? <laughs> yes. Now I'm not sure if it's legitimate autographs, but you know, I only paid a couple of dollars for each. Yeah, it was definitely worth it. Then just try reselling those. No. <laughs> Didn't think so. But, Frank, you certainly have a lot of stuff. And uh, you know what? You got a great sponsor, too. Uh, oh, yes, too? yes, yes. Yeah. You, do, you have great sponsors, you know. And uh, Feltman's Hot Dogs, you know, 
Uh, one thing I'm looking forward to is my new place is uh, there is a barbecue pit that's not completely installed yet, but it's going to be installed eventually. And when I when that's installed and I can go out and do some barbecuing, you know I'm going to get some Feltman's on the grills. Yes, you know, Feltman's is America's first and original hot dog company, and Charles Feltman invented the hot dog. You know, Feltman's is a veteran-owned business revived by two Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn and his brother Michael, in 2015. And they did it in honor of brother Jimmy, uh, who was killed in the 9-11 attacks at the World Trade Center. You know, with a team of military veterans that have collectively served over 110 minutes in combat, uh, Feltman's is now one of the fastest-growing natural food companies in the United States. They're 100% all-natural hot dogs, are, uh, and they're all beef hot dogs are available for purchase online and at Whole Foods, you know. they and, and not to mention, they ship super fast, and it'll be the perfect addition to your family's next cookout, and I can't wait to be able to cook out in my new apartment. So uh, use promo code FRANK, and you'll receive 10% off all of your Feltman products, and that includes uh, Bratwurst, which I haven't had a chance to eat yet. Uh, I think when I get settled in my new place, I'll give that a try. I got them sent to me beautifully. Nicely uh, packed, you know, uh, you know, they're fresh. Uh, and, that's, but, and that's 10% off with the promo code FRANK for any items at Feltman's.us. You know, allow me, Frank, is always presented to you by Feltman's. Yes, it is. And uh, Frank, we're already nine weeks through the NFL, uh, or eight weeks, I should say. We're, we're embarking on week, week nine as of tomorrow night. So there's only nine weeks left in the season, and both our teams seeming like their seasons are over, but there's definitely a lot of buzz and, and things going on. And something that was actually overshadowed with the NFL trade deadline was some sad and tragic news yesterday, of course, uh, Henry Ruggs. And I wanted to get your thoughts on the whole situation. Oh, jeez, you know, yeah. this game is having a good year. He was having a good year. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the Raiders have already overcome the uh, the uh, John Gruden situation. But what are you doing, man? I mean, what are you doing? I mean, he hit the trifecta. He hit the trifecta. He was he twice the legal limit alcohol. He was driving a hundred and something, 150 miles per hour. And he had a loaded gun in his car. Now, the loaded gun is probably not going to get him that much in uh, Vegas. Because that's kind of a libertarian state. Not not, not like New Jersey, uh, the People's Republic over here, or New York. But what are you doing, man? Call How about fucking Uber? Or a limo that's on every corner in Vegas. He's, he's 22 years old. He's he way under the influence. His down the drain. His life down the drain. Uh, I, mean, I mean, he was having a good year. He was he, on his way to becoming a, a star in the NFL. And, 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 you know, I don't know if it hit him what happened yet or anything. But he killed, he killed this lady and her dog, apparently. Yeah, 23-year-old girl he killed. He was going 156 miles per hour. The prosecutor said he's never seen someone going that fast hitting someone. I mean, it, it, he's lucky he lived. Yeah, and he's in a neck brace. Apparently, he was in a wheelchair. His girlfriend is seriously injured, and he killed a girl. And it really is a horrible, horrible and tragic story. And, uh, and the Raiders did the right thing, releasing him. Yeah, they didn't even they, they didn't even hesitate. Frank, you were a court clerk for a long time, and I'm sure you will agree with what I'm about to say. They're going to make an example out of him. They're not going to give him a light sentence. He is not going to be let off the hook in any way, and he shouldn't. I know somebody. Um, in fact, I'll t I'll put it this way: the uh, unit, uh, the the place I'm moving out of. Has a, a a building supervisor. Not quite. She lives here. She lives here. She's uh like, but and she like collects the rent and makes sure that everything's kept up. She has that, that sniveling toad, who's the maintenance guy, 
working for her. Her son is in prison. What for? Uh, about maybe five years ago now. He ran over a pregnant woman Oof. and uh, her brother who were sitting at a bus stop. And he happened because he was shooting up heroin Holy while shit. driving. Whoa. They actually found a needle under his under the driver's seat. Holy shit. And uh, he got 10 years. He killed her, I assume. He killed yeah, them? He killed, he killed the, pregnant, uh, the, the pregnant lady. They couldn't save the baby, so he killed the, the baby, too. Does that count as two murders? No, not New Jersey. Some states it does. Some states it does. What about the brother? Paralyzed. Oh. And they weren't even in the street. They were standing at a bus stop. And he ran his car up onto the bus, onto the curb in the bus stop in uh, Verona. Holy shit. And uh, he, like I said, they had, he had the needle. It was right underneath the car seat of the car. He was actually shooting up behind the wheel. Well, I think he deserves that 10-year sentence in the very least. He, he, yeah, no, yeah, he, he, he pled guilty. He ended up, which was the right thing. He pled guilty. Yeah, you know, he has to serve a minimum of eight years. But I mean, that's ten years. That's what Henry Ruggs is at least looking at. Yeah, I think his maximum sentence is uh, if he's found guilty on everything. I think it's twenty years. Yeah, he's probably looking at five to ten years. Yeah, at least, and he'll he'll never play in the NFL again, and shouldn't. He threw his whole life away. His career, his life, 22 years old. He ruined what are, you, what, what are you doing, man? I mean, come on. He had the okay. ball by the balls right now. And, and he was having a good year. And the, he had no character issues coming out of college. Apparently, he didn't even drink. His best friend died getting hit by a drunk driver. And this guy fucking does the same thing. One decision can throw your whole life away. Just, 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 it's just terrible. Yeah, it is. And I'm still, I'm going to the Giants Raiders game on Sunday at MetLife, and Rugs obviously will not be playing. So that's, uh, I'm sure, I mean, every NFL Sunday now, mm. every game, every season, it's got to absolutely crush you. It'll crush him for the rest of his life. Having to deal with the family, that he killed the daughter. And just everything, living living with that for the rest of his life. It 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 it, it truly is a shame. Yeah, it is horrible. Um, a couple more NFL notes, I guess, on that somber topic, uh, which we've been hearing about nonstop. But uh, Mike White is in Canton now, the Jets' backup quarterback, for throwing for over 400 yards and three touchdowns in his first start with the Jets. First Jets quarterback in 20 years. 21 years since Vinny Testaverde did it in 2000 to throw for 400 yards in a game. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, it's pretty, and it was even more surprising how great he was. Well, it just kind of shows you how bad the Jets quarterback play has been over the last two decades. But Mike White was was really something. He looked a lot better than Zach Wilson has this year, I have to say. Well, did you hear the uh, actually... Hired uh, Zach Wilson's uh, personal quarterback to help him. Joe Flacco. No. No. Uh, what was his name? He actually played in the NFL. Played for the Dolphins too. Uh, what was this guy's name? Cleo Lemon. No. Uh, uh, John Beck, I think it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of John Beck. Yeah, John Beck. He actually, yeah, the Dolphins actually drafted him about uh, 20 something years ago. Well, it's why the Jets brought in Flacco, and it's why they were trying to trade for or bring back uh, Josh McCown, too, because McCown was schooling Donald in the beginning of his career. But obviously, that didn't help very much. The, the, and, Jets, and, the Jets made another change, too, during that game. Uh, LaFleur was on the sideline 
through all Wilson starts because he's a rookie, they they let him go up in the booth and the quarterback's coach came down on the sideline. And it sounds like that's what the Jets are going to do the rest of the way. Well, the Dolphins don't even know who the coach, who the offensive quarterback coach is and the quarterback coach. It's just a dumpster fire. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, and speaking of an, uh, another dumpster fire, the last note we have on the NFL tonight, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. is about to be an ex-Cleveland Brown. He truly is a drama queen. His own father posted a lowlights clip of Baker Mayfield missing him. Did you see that? Yeah, well. It's it's Cleveland. Cleveland seems to know that uh, Baker Baker Mayfield doesn't need to deal with his shit. Stefanski told the whole locker room that Beckham's not on the team anymore, and that they're working to just they're going to release him. I think. You know, Odo Beckham is a team of one. He does not care about his team. No. He's never cared about his team. And he hasn't been a superstar since 2016. He hasn't been a superstar since he heard it, he broke his ankle in uh, 2017. That's when his whole career took a turn. And of course, that that catch, that overrated catch, is all he ever has. But you know what's not overrated? You know, uh, Christmas time is coming. Christmas time is coming. Yes, yes, yes. The holiday season season is upon us. And you know, I'm giving thanks to our friends at Manscaped this year. Do I tell my extended family that I have the Performance Package 4.0 from the global leaders in below-the-waist grooming? Not to mention it includes the lawnmower 4.0 to tame my bush and score brownie points with the in-laws. You know, it's time that you gift yourself Manscaped or the man in your life who needs it. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with 20% off plus free shipping with the code tank by going to manscaped.com think your holiday spread is good it's time to give thanks to the manscaped performance package 4.0 or as i like to call it the perfect package for your package get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code tank at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with tank at manscaped.com be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from manscaped your balls will thank you. Yes, they will. And don't forget Thanksgiving. We have Thanksgiving in a couple of weeks too. And uh, Frank, are you are you a guy who, as soon as Halloween's over, you're in Christmas mode, or, or do you like to wait till after Thanksgiving? After like, Thanksgiving. Oh, me too. I, I, uh, I know. I remember this one time. Uh, this cartoon I I liked. It was on the internet. It had uh, Santa and a cat and a turkey looking at him. Hey, fat boy. Wait your turn. This is my month. Yeah, seriously. I mean, I know a lot of Christmas kooks who are into it now and watching Christmas movies and getting into the holiday spirit. But that's after Thanksgiving. December 1st, really, is when I like to start uh, thinking about Christmas. After Thanksgiving. I think it's when uh, Santa goes down uh, uh, whatever avenue that is by Macy's. When Santa passes Macy's, that's when the Christmas series, uh, season begins. And people love watching Christmas movies before Thanksgiving and everything. But for me, two big Thanksgiving specials. One is, of course, the Sopranos Thanksgiving special where Ralph, uh, Tony uninvites Ralph to Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, the guy that was always falling asleep, too. Yeah. Have you heard the good news? Have you heard the good news? Yeah. And, of course, Gigi uh, dies on the toilet from constipation. Um, I don't know if you, uh, this is a, a show that's a little before your time called WKRP in Cincinnati. No. It was a uh, show that came out in the late 70s, early 80s, and it was about a radio station. And, uh, they had two, uh, two de- uh, disc jockeys, uh, one was like the stoner guy, and it was, uh. Uh, Howard Hessman is uh, played a guy. Uh, what was his name? Johnny, Doctor Johnny Fever. And then uh, there was this smooth soul uh, DJ who was uh, played by Tim Reed. His name is Venus Flytrap. Oh my god! 
And it was, and it was they did all these characters in the radio station, and he was supposed to be changing. And in the first episode, he changed like the radio station from like uh, easy listening music to rock music. So you had like the holdouts. You had like this like real nerd who was the the, the news hawk guy. And uh, so it's supposed to be like the, the culture clash at the radio station of the rock and roll guys and the, the guys in the suits. So they had the Halloween, the Thanksgiving episode. And the station manager, who felt he wasn't as part of the thing, came up with this plan for Thanksgiving to, to promote the radio station. So they had the news guy out there. They had the, uh, the, the sales guy out there. And they don't tell anyone what's going on. So they're at a mall. All of a sudden... The guy's looking up, he goes, I'm seeing something falling out of a helicopter. It's coming down. It cr- doesn't have a parachute. And all of a sudden, they, they realize that they're throwing turkeys out the helicopter. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and people are running. In this mall, you see people running. And at the end, the guy comes walking in there and goes, as God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine getting hit with a turkey from a helicopter, you'd probably die. So it was like this outrageous, like radio station promotion. I I think that's the funniest television show. Thanksgiving special is the WKRP in Cincinnati turkey. Uh, tur- I think it's called, like called Turkeys Away episode. Oh my god! How long and it's like a it's last? like a classic. How long was that? Did the show run for? About four years. Four years. The other Thanksgiving special I like is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, of course. Yeah, I watch that every Thanksgiving night with my family. We got any good football games on Thanksgiving this year? <sighs> well, the Lions are playing. You know, yeah. uh, Thanksgiving is for. Um... Uh, let me see. Thanksgiving games. We know the Lions won't be winning that game. Uh, I mean, Thanksgiving is for three things. Food, family, and remembering the Detroit Lions exist. Yeah, pretty much. Well, actually, here are the games. And they're pretty much, uh, maybe uh, one game is good, and the other one's halfway decent. But it's the Lions and the Bears, classic Thanksgiving matchup. Bears not very good. Lions terrible. Yeah, Lions actually might win that game. I mean, that would help the Giants considering they have the Bears first round pick next year. I mean, just just to piss off Big Cat. Yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, the uh, Cowboys are playing the Raiders. That's a pretty good game. Yeah, and then the uh, Sunday night, the Thanksgiving night game this year is uh. Uh, without Jameis Winston, though, it doesn't seem as good as it did. It's the Saints and the Bills. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty good. We'll, we're going to see what happens with the Saints in the next few weeks. Taysom Hill, I guess, will be their quarterback the rest of the way. Uh, no, I think it's going to be Trevor Simeon. What is Taysom Hill injured or something? He's not a quarterback. He's just a wildcat guy. He comes on the field every now and then. When he starts, he doesn't win. No. But are you seriously going to roll with um, with Sammy in the rest of the way? Supposedly, they're thinking about calling in uh, Phillip Rivers. Oh, that'd be interesting. I'd really like to see that, actually. Now, the NFC is very uh, – NFC has some good teams. They have six pretty good teams. Now, the Saints are spotty, but Cowboys – Packers look like Cowboys are going to the fucking Super Bowl. They both look like Super Bowl contenders. I think it'll be the Packers, but I think NFC Championship will be Packers Cowboys. Um, you have the Buccaneers, the Saints, the Rams look really good, and you have the Cardinals who also look really good. How about the damn uh, the Cowboys winning last week without Dak Prescott? Oh. I'm I mean, uh, does Kirk Cousins have any idea how to win when the lights are turned on? I mean, the, the, he he can't win a playoff game. He can't win a primetime game. It, it, seriously, if, if if the nation's watching, he shits the bed every time. Yeah, and Cooper Rush, who was with the Giants last year, uh, played a decent enough game. He made a hell of a throw out game winning throw to Amari Cooper, who made an even better catch, and the Cowboys wound up stealing a game that they never should have won. 
I, I mean, the Vikings just let them hang, let them hang, let them hang, and then ended up hanging. Do you think the Cowboys are right for sitting Dak Prescott, being cautious with his calf? Yes. They won. <clears throat> Look at their division. Washington is terrible. The Giants are terrible. The Eagles are terrible. They got the division locked up. He shouldn't play. He shouldn't play unless it's up. He's absolutely 100 percent, or it's a game that they need to win. And they're playing the Broncos this week. The Broncos just traded with Lauren Miller, so you know that team's not going to be prepared to play the, uh, to to win this week. No, and the Giants had no business losing to the Chiefs on Monday night. The Chiefs looked terrible, and they gave the Giants every opportunity. And then an offsides penalty negated what would have probably been an interception that led to a win for the Giants. You ever noticed that ever since every time Jackson Mahomes does something stupid, Patrick Mahomes plays like shit? Pretty much, yeah. But Patrick Mahomes has been just very careless with the ball all season. Did you see the, the, the TikTok? Where it, it looked like Patrick Mahomes looked like he was a hostage. Yeah, at the restaurant. Yeah, I did. He, he had to wanted no part of that. I mean, he's just... He, <laughs> You know, does he realize he has the right to tell his brother to go fuck himself? <laughs> it's too nice, I guess. I mean, I don't know how he hasn't lost his patience by now. Someone actually showed me a, 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 little, a kid that was maybe about 10 who looked like uh, Patrick Mahomes in the stands. Oh, I saw that, yeah, on TV. And then they had, like, the, the, the caption, the little brother that Patrick Mahomes <laughs> wants. Yeah, <pretty> <laughs> <much>. <laughs> Because, because Jackson Mahomes, what does he do? Is that all he does? Is TikToks? Probably makes a lot of money off of it. <laughs> I just love, I love to look at Patrick Mahomes' face. Did you see uh, who uh, lost the mayor's race in Stanford, Connecticut? Bobby Valentine. And on the same night, the Braves won the World Series. So was it not fitting of the late 90s, early 2000s Mets-Braves rivalry? Yep. Well, you know, uh, Pat Mahomes was the pitcher on the mound when uh, Bob Valentine wore the mustache. Yeah, I did know that. And this Braves team clearly looked like a team of destiny by the end. And uh, Astros really were not impressive. And you realize if the, if the Mets took care of business in that five game series at the end of July, there's chances the Braves would have not made those trades. Yeah, potentially. But you know what? It's the trades, but it was also Alex Anthopoulos built something there that was a winner and was ready, and they were close last yeah, year. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, the Mets are not gonna. The, the Mets are not in position now to get free agents. They're not in position to sign anybody, and they're not in position to keep anybody because this uh, the president's sea shirts has turned into a full on scale dumpster fire. The GM meetings are four days from tomorrow, and the Mets still don't have a GM. They don't have a president of baseball operations. They're still interviewing people, and Andy Martino is saying that they have time and they're not rushing it. But free agency is starting, and we very much could have a work stoppage in the next month. We will have a work stoppage in the next month. That's my only, I guess, logic, trying to make logic of the situation. That's the only thing that makes sense to me because a couple of people in the industry have told me that we're not going to see much movement on the free There's agent market. There's not going to be much movement. Until the new CBA comes along. Although so Buster Posey just retired. Buster Posey did retire. Um, but And Tucker Barnhart was traded today, too. But... Um, that just seems like maybe why the Mets are not rushing things along because no, they, they're not rushing things along because nobody wants the fucking job because it's a dumpster fire organization. I mean, they talked to this lady the other day. What happened with that? Uh, Raquel Ferreira was is set to interview. There's been no news since. Um, I they're now that, guy, at, that that's now out. He's not no interest in the job. I heard it was unlikely the the Mets. I don't know who side, but all I heard was that it's unlikely that the Mets hire her. I don't know how true that is. What um, are they doing? They have been interested in Billy Epler apparently now, but no interview. Yeah, in place. yeah someone, uh, someone who uh, completely fucked up the Angels. Billy uh, or uh, Daniel Adler from the Twins turned them down. 
Uh, Gene Afterman turned them down from the Yankees. I, so, I mean, it, enough's enough. Hire somebody. They also were had interest in the Braves and Cardinals assistant general managers, which I think they should be looking at someone who comes from a winning organization. And either of those guys, I feel like, would be good fits. It just depends if they want to leave. And no one seems to want to leave their situation. It's, just, it's a dumpster fire. They also have uh, interest in the assistant GM of the Orioles, which I don't really can't make much good sense God, of that. No. Good God, no. Yeah, I just don't understand the, the level of interest there. I don't know what happened with Josh Burns either. Haven't heard anything about him. And I'm hearing that the, uh, the that some of the players that, that, that they're interested in, that uh, teams want compensation, and they might ha- Mets might have to give up compensation for just even talking to them. Well, there are some players who they'll have to give up the number 14 draft pick if they sign, and number one is Nick Castellanos. So that's another reason I see that the Mets maybe won't sign him, but... So basically, it's going to be like a Will Pond off season. Nothing I don't know. I changed. They got to get the general manager in place they, and president. They got to get the uh, the manager in place. Now they already missed out on Bob Melvin last week, who the A's shockingly let him go to San Diego for nothing in return, even though he was under contract. And that was because they're signaling a fire sale. They wanted to get rid of his four million dollar salary. They let him go for nothing. Now the only two managerial vacancies in the league are the Mets and the A's, and Mike Schilt's available, and the Mets need to get moving because, I mean, depending they're on not, who, They are not going to get anybody. You're going to end up with Brad Osmus. Whoever. With his, with his uh, book of, of diuretics that, 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 uh, that losing uh, and playing the analytical assigned way is better than winning. The Mets need to get a front office person in place, and then they they need to pick the manager. But Mike Schilt should be number one on that list. Whoever comes in, it should be Mike Schilt. And, I mean, the A's aren't paying Mike Schilt. So yeah, well, it you watch. Like it's going it, 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 to be Brett Osmus. If Schilt wants to manage next year, I don't see why he shouldn't be the Mets. Why the Mets wouldn't. Yeah, well, be, well, the Mets are incompetent. That's why. they don't. I, want to... I don't understand, Frank, and I was saying this the other day. I don't understand why teams like this don't make the logical – move by bringing in someone experienced. The Mets have no interest in Brian Sabine, who wanted the job. Uh, the, the, yeah, Brian, Brian Sabian would have been a, a great choice, but but what the fuck are they doing? I, it, it really does seem like like Sandy is just, just causing everything because he wants the damn job. By the way, they tried to hire Bob Melvin before even hiring a front office exec, and he turned them down because he lives in Arizona and doesn't want to leave the West Coast. So it's just really a matter of does Mike Schilt want the Mets job and they should offer it to him. But what I was saying the other day, too, is like even like the Mets not wanting Joe Girardi two different times, the Giant, the New York Giants not wanting Mike McCarthy enough and the Cowboys taking him. When your team's a mess, you need someone who has a track record of winning and experience who can lead you and knows how to win, not someone who's developing. Not Steve Cohen, when he when he took over the Mets, said, I'm not going to pay people to develop under my dime. And that's what they did with Rojas. That's what they – seems like the track they've been going ever since he took over. Well, well, he hasn't said a single thing that's been true yet. How do I trust this guy? Uncle Stevie, Uncle Stevie. Yeah, I hate that. Honestly, I'm tired of that. Well, another uh, – dysfunction of the uh, disastrous 2021 season was finally uncovered the mystery of the rat and raccoon saga Uh did you hear what happened yeah Lindor grabbed McNeil by the throat in the tunnel because apparently McNeil had a bad attitude towards the uh the shifting philosophy the Mets had which improved their defense actually a lot this year McNeil was dismissive of it, and Lindor was getting pissed off. And McNeil actually got benched a few weeks before that for not complying by Rojas. And then it just all kind of boiled over. It led to another misplay, and Lindor just had enough. I think McNeil is. Uh, I think that's he, that's just that's just gone off the rails. McNeil, like, not only did he have a down, a really bad year this year. I don't know his attitude wasn't great i mean he keeps doing hitting the ball the same way and then he slams his helmet to the ground yeah i don't know i feel like 
Now, I've been saying this too. I think the Mets should trade for a third baseman. Jose Ramirez and Matt Chapman are going to be available. In the Ramirez deal specifically, if they have to send Ronnie Mauricio and Viento, Endor Vientos and McNeil, you send McNeil with them and you just kind of part way. I, I feel like it's it's kind of McNeil's time might be coming to an end, honestly. But if you get a guy like Jose Ramirez, it's a no brainer. Not to mention, like, this stuff with McNeil and Lindor it tells you the Mets can't go into another season having them be the double play combo. It's more the reason to bring back Baez. And McNeil's going to be your everyday left fielder if they keep him. Nah, nah McNeil, you got to try to trade McNeil. I, I think at this point, McNeil and Dom Smith should definitely be traded this offseason in a package to get maybe a third baseman or an outfielder, someone who's a star hitter and package them because this core that the Mets built clearly is not winning. I mean, they can win no. keep Alonzo, Lindor, uh, but really everyone else, no one else should be. Uh, oh, should the, the Alonzo, Lindor, DeGrom, everyone else is touchable. Maybe Nemo. I'd, I'd like to keep Nemo too. Keep, keep Nemo. Nemo should not be untouchable. I think Conforto is going to leave. I'd like to see them sign Starling Marte. Well, they got to they got to do the, the qualifying offers. I'm here. They're, 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 so so basically, they don't want to sign people who have qualifying offers, but they don't want to give qualifying offers. The whole organization is just like a, a pretzel. They uh, they 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 covet and respect their draft picks, yet they wasted the draft pick this year. Yeah. And, and then, and then, then you have Buster only r- ripping him for firing Zach Scott on the same day that Henry Ruggs killed somebody. That's the other thing, and I'm glad you brought that up. Buster only has killed the Mets at every corner, and has something against them. Clearly, personally, he was killing them when Scott got the DWI. He was killing them for firing now, because of the now, death. now, now Zach Scott had uh, just uh, Zach Scott. Should he have been fired for the UI? I don't know. But you know what? He was the acting general manager this year. Acting general manager means that you're auditioning for the job. He fucked up the draft. He got into the UI. He fucked the trade deadline, too. The trade deadline wasn't a good, didn't go well. He failed his audition. The trade deadline was the reason they didn't make the playoffs after holding on at first for 103 days, too. They needed to make moves, and they didn't. And, and okay, not selling the farm without DeGrom, sure, fine, makes sense. But the Braves didn't sell the farm to get Duvall. They didn't sell the farm to get Soler, Rosario, Jock Peterson. The Mets couldn't have gotten one of those guys. Rosario would have been a very good pickup for the Mets. He's a free agent. I mean, they maybe still could sign him. If they trade McNeil or, or don't intend on keeping McNeil, I mean, Rosario could be your everyday left fielder next year. It's 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 still Will Ponzi in the whole organization. What and what about in the rotation? I mean, Degrom finally spoke yesterday for the first time in uh, you know since July since he got hurt, and um, he says he thinks that his elbow got screwed up in the MRI tube where he had his elbow raised above. He was laying on his stomach, he had his elbow raised up for almost an hour, and he thinks that's what flared flared up his elbow when he. Yeah, they, could, they yeah they, they, they go to discount MR discount MRI people. Yeah, the, for, the, 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 I don't want to hear, hear any more player met players going to the hospital for special surgery. They didn't actually go to H, HSS for that one. He was in Pittsburgh getting that one. Then then go to a modern city, and go to a modern open MRI. Yeah, I just don't get it. But Degrom, uh, in, in I very- actually had a, I was supposed to go for an MRI a couple years ago, and they couldn't do it for me because I was too uh, wide. When I, uh, I think I might have torn a, a rotator cuff. So what'd you do? I did nothing and just hoped it healed. I still can't really move my arm fully. Well, that uh, that first pitch you threw out at the that game you went to, it must have hurt. I mean, it's better now. I mean, but uh, I was trying to lift weights a couple of years ago, and I couldn't lift my arm higher than this. That's right, when you went to LA Fitness. But uh, DeGrom did say that he had no discomfort, and he dialed up his fastball to 98 in September, and, and he didn't have pain or soreness. Ligaments intact. He, he says he would have been back if they made the playoffs, that he would have came back. So, you know what? Maybe he'll be okay next year, but he does have to prove he can pitch 
30 plus starts again in a season and he's going to be 34 in June. So when you look at it, who, who do you think the Mets should sign? Should they sign a Marcus Stroman who's more of a, you know, <coughs> yes. or, or should they sign Robbie Ray, AL Cy Young candidate, Kevin Gosman? Yes. Yes. If you had your choice of one of those guys, who would you take? Stroman. You think Stroman? Yes. If that happened, say the Mets had DeGrom, they brought back Stroman, they brought back Syndergaard, then you have Carrasco and Taiwan Walker. I still want another player signed, too. But you're you're also counting on bounce backs from four out of five of your starters, which isn't exactly the best route to go. Well, Stroman had a good year last year. I mean, I actually think he should win the gold glove. Oh, yeah, he should have. And and Taiwan Walker was uh, led pitchers in defensive run save, too. Yeah, but, you know, that one play hurt him. And having Marcus Stroman, who kind of self-promotes his defensive. This. Yeah, well, we know that. But No, uh, no Stroman, Stroman's a better fielder than uh, no, Walker. The Mets potentially might not have a left-handed starter in their rotation next year. If they do bring back Stroman, say that the only way is if they sign Robbie Ray, but if they or Eduardo Rodriguez, but if they sign Stroman, then and they bring back Syndergaard, then they don't have a left-handed starter, and they're counting on bounce backs from Carrasco, from Tywan Walker. But well, Tywan Walker is your fifth starter, Carrasco is your four, Stroman as the two, and Syndergaard as the three behind Degrom one. I mean. If they stay healthy, they could be pretty good. But we know the Mets with underperformance and injuries aren't, you know, they haven't had the best luck. I'm, unless something changes drastically, I'm sensing a 105 loss team right now. Frank, here's my blueprint for the Mets. And hear me out here. And we'll see if this is actually maybe a winning formula. But here's what I think they should do. And starting with the, I don't know who they're going to hire for the front office, but starting with the manager seat, Mike Schilt. Then for offseason moves, I think you trade for a third baseman if it's Jose Ramirez or Matt Chapman. You re-sign Baez. That opens the door to re-sign Baez to a big deal. You sign, you let Conforto go. You sign Starling Marte, maybe Ed uh, Rosario to play left field, Marte in right, Nimmo in center. Then on the pitching staff, you either re-sign Stroman or you sign Robbie Ray. And then in the bullpen, you re-sign Aaron Loop. And you bring in Archie Bradley, who was a lockdown setup man for the Phillies. And I think that would put, especially if they're still holding on to Diaz as a closer, I feel like Archie Bradley would be a good addition to that bullpen. Maybe and that then, and then you make a trade or two. I think the trade comes from from uh, third base. That's what I think their trade's going to be. And then you have, you essentially have Vientos and possibly Beatty coming up next year. Even and, Alvarez, I mean, Frank, if James McCann struggles again, Alvarez is starting in double A. I think if he continues to rake, I would put healthy. Francisco Alvarez on the fast track. I would seriously consider even putting uh, Francisco Alvarez to start a year in Syracuse and not Binghamton. I think Alvarez by May or June will be in triple A if he continues to rake the way he has. And then if he's hitting well and doing well, then maybe mid season, end of the season. He, yeah, you know he turns twenty in November. Yeah, I know, which is crazy even to think that he's this far along already. I but saw him miss the cycle by a single. I know, he was he was crushed at that game. And Frank, he'd be up or he'd probably be up this year, like guarantee, if they didn't miss a whole year of the minor league baseball in twenty twenty. I mean, this is the catcher the Mets have been waiting for. And you know what, though? Expecting bounce backs, I'd say you you obviously expect a bounce back season from Lindor because of the way he hit down the stretch. He hit very well. Um, other than that, James McCann should be your only bounce back expectation from the lineup. And then, and then that's when you go and upgrade the rest of the team. And they're probably going to have a DH, too. I mean, Jorge Soler is a free agent. Kyle Schwarber is a free agent. You know who they're going to sell us on? Robbie Cano. Yep. You got to see how he impacts the uh, the luxury tax, too. The Mets, I don't have any confidence right now in this organization. No. I mean, I can't blame you, Frank. I don't know how you would. By the way, uh, you see my place. I'm still trying to figure it out. 
Is that actually a drawer at, that's under my uh, oven that I could put my uh, cookie sheets in? Yeah, I, I have one too. Nice. And how does that ice worker, ice, ice maker work in the fridge, freezer? It just, as long as it works, it generates ice for you. Wow. You it up. Yeah, I saw that. That was so funny. When it was such a wholesome moment where you're like, wow, an ice maker. I've never seen one of these before. And then a dishwasher. I have never owned a dishwasher. I've That's never used a dishwasher. Crazy. You're missing out, Frank. You're you're in for a treat. I mean, I hate washing dishes. That's why I stopped pretty much doing Tank's Cooks is because I hate washing dishes. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Dishes are bad. Um, so when are you gonna have a housewarming party? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, start calling these movers and pricing them. I want to move out on the fifteenth. I I'm going to Miami on Friday. Meeting, actually, I'm meeting Doug's in Jacksonville. We're going down to Miami on Saturday. We're going to watch the Dolphins play on Sunday. Then we're going to go back up to state. I was going to go for two games, but I don't want to watch them get murdered by the Ravens. So I'm just going to go and hopefully beat the Texans. And then uh, on the way back, we're going to go to an aquarium somewhere in Miami, and I'm going to uh, see about swimming with a dolphin. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> yes. Where did you get that idea? I have never seen a dolphin live. I've always wanted to see a live dolphin. And you can swim with them. Yeah, or at least at least I want to pet the dolphin. Uh, shake fins with the dolphin. You know, those are very intelligent animals. Yeah, they are. They're all like the smartest animals in the sea. Uh, I mean, they, they said that if, if dolphins had like uh, posable hands, they would actually build could build houses. That's pretty crazy. Imagine a bunch of dolphins building a house. They said that a dolphin's basically got the intelligence of like a seventh grade child. Oh my God. <laughs> well, on that note, uh, I think it'd be best to roll into some massive tank tonight. Um, or Katina wants to know, uh, We'll skip that one, actually. That's a, we're we're going to save that one for a different night. Um, Andrew Kylo Ren 10 wants to know which ballpark has the best hot dogs and which one has the worst hot dogs. That I've been to so far? Yeah. They're pretty much all the same. Although I would definitely say this. Yankee Stadium has the worst. Yeah, I think that's true. Well, Yankee Stadium... Yankee Stadium's concessions are, uh, the, 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 uh, although, you know what? Camden Yards was worse. Really? Yeah, Camden Yards was terrible. And it could be because of how bad the Orioles were, and there were only 2,000 fans there that night. But that probably doesn't help. Yeah, I'm sure it doesn't. Um... And uh, Yankee Stadium's concessions are about as bad as the Prudential Center. I mean, Prudential Center's pretty bad, too. Well, that leads us into our next question, because Paul Ricci wants to know, what's your favorite concession stand at Prudential Center? I like going up to the restaurant every now and then. You have a good burger. You can get a good burger at the restaurant at the Prudential Center. But for concession stands, I actually like, uh, well, I like the uh, the chicken tenders at the Prudential Center. They're pretty good, but. Uh, and and they call and they have a the Bayonne Diner, is a decent concession stand at the Prudential Center. Uh, but you know what? They have good nachos at the Prudential Center. Good uh, and uh, you can get a uh, a hockey helmet filled with popcorn, and you could get it refilled too. Oh wow, it's a pretty good luxury. Um, but I know you don't like the chicken parm at Prudential Center. I look like just a chicken tender with uh, ketchup and. Jeez, yeah, that man. was that was pretty 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 bad. Uh, do you know what uh, the concession stands are now being run by uh, Rutgers Nork athletes? That's bizarre. When did that start? Uh, last year. And they have a lot of uh, like Rutgers Nork people uh, who are like uh, I guess, and they help raise money for the athletics at Rutgers Nork. Well, that's a good cause, at least. You know, my father actually went to Rutgers Nork. I didn't know that. 
After the service? After the service, yes. Got his yeah. teaching degree from Rutgers Nork. He had no student loans either. Yeah, so he got his teaching degree at Rutgers Nork. And I then uh I had to break the news to him uh last uh, a couple of weeks ago that they knocked down one of his former schools. Was he upset? <laughs> yeah, he kinda liked the school. And, and and the school was actually right across right across the street from uh, NJIT. It was Warren Street School. Uh, it stopped being an elementary school about uh, j- just before he retired, uh, and then they made it like a uh, Nork History High, and Nork History High fl- flopped. It didn't. Uh, it, it didn't work. So they tried to make it a charter school. The charter school failed after a year. So they were uh, Nork uh, NGIT wanted to knock it down and build a new building there. But the uh, historic trust tried to say that uh, Warren Street School was uh, one of the oldest schools in Newark and had a unique design, and they wanted it to uh, to preserve the school. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, vagrant comes in, fire happens, and all of a sudden now the uh, the uh, historic society said it wasn't worth trying to save it, and it got knocked down. Jeez, there you go, full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, you know, there was a classic uh, mansion in work. Mm. Nice mansion. The historic trust wanted it saved. The, the owners defaulted on it. Nork uh, wanted to knock it down for uh, new housing. Yada, yada, yada. Vagrant comes in. Fire. <laughs> We're getting new housing. Oh, my God. Something's going on there. I, I mean, it's amazing how whenever a building that Nork wants to knock down and the historic trust is trying to preserve, a vagrant goes in and sets a fire. Is it Silvio Dante setting that fire, maybe? <laughs> it's, it's amazing how that happens. I know. So Such a coincidence. <laughs> we are the soprano state. Yes, we are for a reason. But uh, last question we have before we go, because we're running out of time. Uh, Furkan Kormaz fan wants to know, what's the usual day at Barstool headquarters like for you, Frank? Uh, I come in. I put up my uh, taste test or my hot dog review or whatever I'm going to put on that day. It publishes at 420 usually. Uh, I write the On This Date blog. Uh, maybe I'll do a little content here and there. Uh, uh, it, if not, I'll go for uh, an extended walk, maybe uh, one day a week. Uh, I'll order something to eat, and then I typically go home uh, about five. And I get in, I get, I get to there at eleven. I leave at five, and if there are other things going on, I might stay later. If not, I might leave earlier. Today I left at four because uh, I wanted to, uh, to move some stuff before I came on and did the show today. Uh, of course, I'm going to uh, Miami tomorrow. Well, I mean, not tomorrow. Well, well, tomorrow when you hear this, Friday I'm going to Miami. Uh, I'm coming back next Wednesday. And I'm um, hoping to get everything moved out of my place and settled in my new apartment by the 16th. There you go. You're going to be very busy these next couple of weeks. Yes. I wish I had that remote control that makes everything go faster and finishes this this job. Like click. Yep. By the way, I still have to learn how to use this thing. I haven't even given it a test drive yet. I don't even know how to what I'm doing with this thing. What is that? This is a drone. Where'd you get that? I bought it at uh, Best Buy. (laughs) You'll definitely have a lot more room to fly it around at the new place. Yeah, they even have a uh, deck and a... uh, courtyard yeah that'll be amazing i can't wait till you move but on that note that's all we have time for this week remember to rate download review and subscribe follow frank at nj tank 99 follow the podcast at frank the tank pod myself at regazzo report and our producer nick bono at nick b media frank uh if you have a song ready for the fans go ahead let me see if i can find this song And, of course, we can't wait for our mashup by our guy, Mikey Betts, our social media producer. 
Uh, he's been making some great uh, edits to all the songs Frank has been singing. For let, the me band. Try, let me try to find a song. I can, I'm trying to find a song. Uh, da, 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 dee, 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 trying to find a song. What are you in the mood for to sing? I don't know. I'm trying to find one. All right. <laughs> be in debt, what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Here we go. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Miami, uh, uh, South Beach bringing the heat up. Ha ha, can you feel that heat? Can you feel all that, feel that, jig it out, uh, uh, here I'm in the place where you go, let's go. Miami, the base and the sun set low, every day like Mardi Gras, every body party all day like long. No work, all play, okay. So we slip something, a little sip, a a spill. Me and Charlie at the bar running up a high bill. Nothing less when we dress to kill. Every time I see the ladies, it's like, hi, Frank. (laughs) I've changed that part right there. Can you all feel all ages and races, real sweet faces, every different nation, Spanish, Haitian, Indian, Jamaican, black, white, Cuban, and Asian. I only came for a day or two of playing, but every time I'm always wind up staying. This is the type of town you can spend a few days in. Miami, the city that keeps the roof a blazing. Party in the city where the heat is on all day long to the break of dawn. Welcome to Miami. Bonavidos de Miami. Dancing in the club where the heat is on all night long on a race is on. I'm going to Miami. Welcome to Miami. Yo, I hear this rain stop. Ain't nothing to mess with. But I like... Can feel like a drip is stripping a chip. Ladies half dressed, fully equipped, and then they keep on stringing. We love you, Tank. We love you. That's your last hit. Click like, subscribe, and that's what I'm saying. It. So I think I'm going to shoot and get something hot. The South Bay Merengue Melting Pot, hot club in the city, is right on the beach. Temperature check to you right in the roof. 500 degrees in the Caribbean stresses. Miami speaking. Pop, I pay every time I go down to spot me. I'm dropping a big set. No stopping me. So cash in the dough. Go to the flow. we we'll pound for pound. And here you go. Party in the city. Key is on all night till the break of dawn. Welcome to Miami. Bouncing to the club. And I hate this on all night. I do it. Is this on. I'm going to Miami. Welcome to Miami. Yes. Click like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.